Welcome to our lecture on fantastic fats. I say fantastic fats because they've got a bad name, haven't they? And as Dr. Malcolm Kendrick shows very clearly in his book, The Great Cholesterol Con, there is no proof that fat causes heart disease. So that's quite shocking news, isn't it? And we also had a look, especially when we looked at the liver, we showed how um, when you have a high carbohydrate diet, it releases a lot of glucose into the blood and the body can't use all of that glucose. Only so much can go into the energy cycle in the cell. Some get stored as glycogen. Then all the excess gets stored as fat. And that can be quite a dangerous fat because and it's called triglycerides. You've heard of triglycerides that they claim that high triglyceride levels are a little bit more of an indication of heart disease. Well, your high triglyceride level comes from high glucose from your high carbohydrate diet. And we also just looked at how the wheat, the hybridized wheat of today, gets the blood sugar levels up higher than any other, even than sugar. And the reason why his book is called Wheat Belly, because that hybridized wheat with its starch structure, amylopectin A, because it gets the blood sugar level up so high, so fast, it dumps it quickly, often on the belly. <laughs> That's why his book's called Wheat Belly, as a visceral fat. So he said it's a special type of fat that just gets dumped there quite quickly. Now when the inactive parts of the body get filled up, then the body starts dumping it on internal organs, starts dumping it on, uh, on kidneys and livers and the like. So that is a dangerous fat. In his book, Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, Udo Rasmus defines them and that's what I want to do for you today. So I wanted to begin by just refreshing your memory that we looked at that scenario uh, last week on this excess carbohydrate, excess glucose, the storing just fat. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to look at a few fats, look at the structure of these fats. When you know the structure of the fats, you begin to understand how the body uses them and where the body uses them and why the body uses them. So we're going to begin by looking at the fat, the common or the, the, the highest fat in the flaxseed or the linseed is called omega-3. And I think we've all heard of omega-3. Yeah. But a lot of people don't really know what that means. They just know that flaxseed or linseed, that's the same thing is the highest source in the vegetarian kingdom of omega-3. Also chia seed, it's the second highest source of omega-3. So what does that three mean? What makes up basically the, the oil is fatty acid chains. And the omega-3 is very high in these fatty acid chains. There's about 19 trillion in one drop of oil. So that's the magnification we're looking at. And in this 18 chain fatty acid, you've got hydrogen atoms either side and they are all connected by a carbon atom. The three means that at the third carbon atom, so one, two, three, there's a double bond. So what's a double bond? A double bond basically means instead of one link, there are two links. And whenever you get a double bond, the hydrogen atoms that are above go and the hydrogen atoms that are underneath develop an electromagnetic field between them which causes them to repel. So that causes a kink in the fatty acid chain. There are three double bonds in flaxseed or linseed, chia seed, so one, two, three, there's another one there. One, two, three, there's another one there. So these hydrogen atoms are gone. And the ones underneath develop an electromagnetic field between them, causing them to repel. So we've got another kink and another kink. 
As a result, this is a very thin oil. It's a very fluid oil. And the British are known for oiling their cricket bats with linseed oil because it disperses so easily. So because it disperses so easily, this can be viewed as quite a good blood thinner. And it can also help to disperse tumours in the body. Tumours. This oil is called a poly. What does poly mean? More than one, more than one double bond. Unsaturated, what does the unsaturated mean? There are empty spots on the fatty acid chain. Let's have a look at the role that these uh, double bonds play in the body. So what, are, what, what role do they play? Number one, they create an electromagnetic field. Now that's important because we are electrical people. We've got a spark of electricity in every cell in the body. And Dr. Neil Nedley in his book, Depression A Way Out, he spends quite a bit of time talking about the importance that omega-3 has in brain function. And in his book, Udo Rasmus, he says that they have done post-mortems on suicide patients and found that their brains were totally deficient in omega-3. And the nut that is the highest in omega-3 is the walnut. But the walnut's not quite as high as the flaxseed or linseed chia. The double bonds are heat sensitive, so the heat is attracted into those empty spots. The double bonds are light sensitive. And the double bonds act like a magnet to oxygen. Now understanding this is of the utmost importance in how we treat these oils. So if you grind the flaxseed and eat it straight away, you, you're getting a nice boost to your electromagnetic field, you're able to um, manage your heat better, you, you, it's light sensitive, you, you might even be able to absorb a little bit more vitamin D. And, and oxygen, the most vital element needed for life, it can help increase your oxygen levels. What an amazing oil. But if you grind the seed and leave it on the table for more than an hour, the light, the heat and the oxygen are attracted into those empty spots and your oil is now destroyed. It even can become mutagenic. Rancid, <coughs> no, rancid oils. That's why, and I'm sure we've all bought walnuts at some time and they taste rancid. Yeah. And they're usually the broken ones. That's why when you buy walnuts, ideally buy, buy them not broken. Because when they're broken, the heat, oil and the oxygen are absorbed and destroyed. So we serve ground flaxseed to our guests, but our staff will grind it, put it in an airtight container in the freezer. And it's the last thing that goes on the table, and it's the first thing that comes off. It's got, you've got about an hour. Whereas the chia seed, they can take up to 25% of their own weight in water. And so soaking them or putting fluid with them puffs them up and you can access the, the oil. You know, they become a little bit more digestible. So let's have a look at our uh, omega-3 story. I read quite a few books to get this bit of information I'm giving you now because there was so much that puzzled me about omega-3. What are we told is the highest source of omega-3? Fish. fish. Yeah. That's right. The fact is, no animal, I mean, no, no animal, yes, no animal can put omega-3 into their fatty acid chain. Only plants can. So why are fish high? Because of the algae. Because of the algae, because of what they eat. That's right. So what happens is the fish feed on the algae and the fish are getting 
alpha linolenic acid. <coughs> so that's the that's the uh, omega three found in flaxseed. So alpha linolenic acid ALA has got three double bonds. So one, two, three. In the fish, ALA is converted to EPA, epicetionic acid, and it's got five double bonds. One, two, three, four, five. In the body, EPA is converted to DHA, decohexionic acid, and it's got six double bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's DHA that's used exclusively for cell membrane function and repair. And you can see why. In the body, we eat ALA. We, we are able in our body to convert ALA to EPA. In our body, we can convert EPA to DHA. And then our body uses that for cell membrane function and repair. So what man does is he extracts that from the fish, puts it into capsules and said, oh, this is superior to this because it's already broken down. But if three double bonds is sensitive to heat, light and oxygen, how sensitive are the six? Are they able to extract that without any exposure to heat, light and oxygen? I wonder. And the fish today that are the highest in DHA are the highest in mercury. So it is far easier and cheaper just to buy your flaxseed. There is a use for your coffee grinder, I tell our guests, <laughs> to grind it up just before you eat it. That's the best thing. Even say grace, then grind it. <laughs> it's very, very fresh. You can get flax oil. And there are companies in Australia. There's Stony Creek flax oil in Australia. And it's in a tin and it's in the fridge. And often if they buy it, they buy it frozen. And they, they maintain that they're able to cold press it without exposure to these elements. One way to know if it's been exposed is you taste it. And the flax oil should be sweet. But if there's any taint of bitterness, you know straight away it's had exposure to light, heat or oxygen. Why would someone take the flax oil? They might take the flax oil as a blood thinner. They might take the flax oil to help disperse a tumour in their body. But personally, I just either have the ground flax or the chia. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> but Henry's filming this, so it's all there. <laughs> What about sunflower? It's high in omega-6. What does the 6 mean? It's also an 18-chain fatty acid. So 6 refers to the position on the fatty acid chain of the first double bond. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There it is there. And there are two double bonds in sunflower. So 1, 2, 3. There's another one there. So you've got hydrogen atoms here here, along here, and along here, and two repelling. So with two repelling, we've got two kinks. So it's not as thin an oil, but it's still a fairly thin oil. But it's also called a poly. Poly meaning? Amen. More than one double bond. Unsaturated? because there's empty spots on the fatty acid chain. What about almond? Almond is high in omega-9. It is also an 18-chain fatty acid and it, ha and it has one double bond. So nine indicating the position on the fatty acid chain of the first double bond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There it is there. Hydrogen atoms here. And here, along here, one repelling action. So one kink. And I think we can all 
identify that olive oil is a thick oil, isn't it? Yes. That's because it's only got one double bond, so it's called a mono, unsaturated. Mono meaning one double bond. Unsaturated because there is still an empty spot on the fatty acid chain. What about coconut? Coconut, th these are called long chain fatty acids because they're 18 chains, but coconut is, contains medium chain fatty acids and short chain fatty acids. So a medium chain would be um, 12, 14, 16. Short chain fatty acid would be 6, 8, 10. So I've drawn a 10 there and every spot is full. So in the cold weather, it's solid and it's called a saturated fat. Poor saturated fat's got a bad name. Let's have a look at what happens in the gastrointestinal tract. Here's the mouth, here's the esophagus, there's the stomach, here's the liver, Underneath the liver is the gallbladder. The gallbladder bile duct comes in and connects with the pancreas, neck of the pancreas. Lining the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine, lining the whole of the small intestine are villi. And up the middle of the villi is a lacteal. Lacteal is part of your lymphatic system. And all through the villi is blood. These are your capillaries. I'm going to show you the journey of these three long chain fatty acids. They're not dealt with in the mouth. They're not dealt with in the stomach. They come through the pyloric sphincter, this little valve here into the duodenum and bile from the, from the gallbladder, which is the reservoir for bile sitting under the liver, releases bile. And bile emulsifies the fat into tiny particles. Then pancreatic lipase further breaks it down and then it's absorbed straight into the lacteal. So your long chain fatty acids go straight into the lymphatic system, to the thymus, to the liver, and the liver says, ah, the surgeons have, a, have arrived, store them. But not so the coconut. Underneath the tongue, there are sublingual glands that release <coughs> lingual lipase. And lingual lipase is the enzyme that breaks down saturated fat. So the saturated fat is unique in that the breakdown begins in the mouth. So this is coconut oil, this is shea butter, this is palm oil, this is butter. The breakdown begins in the mouth under the action of lingual lipase, which is released by the sublingual glands. So when coconut comes into the stomach, the breakdown's already happening. It comes into the duodenum, it doesn't need bile, it doesn't need pancreatic lipase, and what's more, it gets absorbed straight into the bloodstream. Gets taken to the liver, burnt as fuel. There was an Australian farmer who got all these coconuts cheap and he opened them all up to fatten up his cows. The cows lost fat, put on muscle and started bounding all around the paddocks. I think you call them fields. Mm -hmm. So if you want to lose excess fat and get high energy levels, what do you eat? Coconut. 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 And we looked at this earlier in the week. Glucose burns at four calories per gram. Fat 
burns at 9 calories per gram. Can you see why the cows had so much energy? Now what people don't understand with calorie is it's a unit of energy. So if you want a high energy food, what do you eat? And which fat's going to give you the most energy? The fat that's burnt as fuel. So if someone wanted to lose weight, would they eat a fat that the body stored or a fat that the body burnt? Burnt. So if someone wanted to lose weight, what would be the best fat for them? Coconut. It's hard to say. We've been so brainwashed, isn't that true? Do you know there's a great deceiver out there? who's deceived the whole world. I'm just giving you the science. And we looked at the science the other day on the high carbohydrate with all this excess glucose storing as fat. And it's on this basis that the ketogenic diets become popular. Have you heard of the ketogenic diet, the keto diet? Yeah. What's the keto diet? It's very similar to the Atkins, only you think it's even more fat. And people don't have heart attacks or strokes on the keto diet. Yes? But what is it with refined coconut oil? Because the coconut oil we can buy is always with this coconut taste. Yes. So someone that doesn't like coconut has a trouble with that. What is with the refined one? I, I, they've used a chemical process to get the flavour out. One lady said, you can even buy coconut oil that doesn't go solid. I said, yeah, that's a bit of a worry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One man said when he's oil pulling, we talked about oil pulling the other day, putting the coconut mouth, swishing. He said, I, I melted in the microwave, put it in his mouth. I said, if you put it straight in your mouth, it's going to melt. <laughs> There's no need to put it in the microwave. That's why you, you, you can melt it very easily. Yeah? So it's good for cooking because it's not yeah. That's a very good point. Which is the oil? If you wanted to sauté something, which oil would you use? The coconut, because it's heat resistant, light resistant, oxygen resistant, because it's got no double bonds. So let's have a look at planet Earth. And in the middle of the planet we've got the equator where it's very hot. So which foods of these are grown in the equator? It's the coconuts, the saturated fat, perfectly designed for this climate. And another reason why it's perfectly designed, it's antifungal. Now the, the antifungal components in it are caprylic acid. You've heard of caprylic acid? You've got caprylic acid, which is a very strong antifungal. You've got capri acid. You've also got lauric acid. And lauric acid is, is broad-ranged antimicrobial. And coconut is 40% lauric acid. Butter is 2% lauric acid. So the plant-saturated fats are far superior. And in this hot, moist environment, fungus can, and mould can prone to grow. So it's very important that whoever lives there should be eating a lot of coconut to help their body cope with that. Let's go up the planet and we come to the Mediterranean. What plants are grown there? There's your olive and your almond, perfectly designed for the environment there. As you go up the planet, this is what you'll find. The foods grown there are highest in the oils that are perfectly designed for that environment. <coughs> Udo Rasmus quotes a study where a man took a plant grown in the Mediterranean which was very high in omega-9. Same species of plant grown further up, higher in omega-6. Same species of plant grown right up the top, higher in omega-3. Mm -hmm. So the message from that is we should be eating plants that grow in our area, foods that grow in our area predominantly. Now it doesn't mean you can never eat a mango living in Sweden. 
Remember, it's not the odd day you do it and the odd day you don't. It's your habitual daily tendency. Because those foods grown in your area are perfectly designed for your body's needs in that area. Yes? But then would no oil, then sunflower oil would grow in this area? Pardon? We have no oil that could grow in this yeah. area, so no fruit for the oil. Yeah, yeah, so you bring it in. Flax. Mm. Mm. Flax. Mm. Flax. Mm. 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 What about wraps oil? Mm. Mm. Canola oil, but it's not exactly. Canola oil is very high in a fatty acid called uracic acid. And uracic acid is toxic to humans. So, what they've done is they've genetically mo modified the canola oil to get the uracic acid acid levels down, now it's got the FDA tick, I, be, beware of that tick. Mm -hmm. So I don't touch canola oil. In, a, in America you can buy a, a margarine called Earth Balance mm -hmm. and it's got, uh, it's got the mono and, and polyunsaturated oils and it's got some palm oil to make it solid. And there's nothing wrong with that. But in the last, I think it's the last 10 years, they're putting canola oil in there. But I'm sorry. Sorry, the canola oil is modified from the rapeseed oil. And, uh, and people have said that, that the canola oil is bad, but it's the original rapeseed oil. I mean, I don't know what we have here in Europe, but we grow rapeseed oil. Yeah. So that's the... Yeah. So if it hasn't been genetically modified, it's still high in uracic acid. So it's, yes, it's, and it's cheap oil. It's a cheap, you know, cheap crop to grow. So what is the best oil? Your body uses all of them for different functions. And that's why to have a variety is a good idea. It uses the omega-3s and 6 for cell membrane function repair, but if you don't have enough 3 and you have too much 6, that's known to increase inflammation. But if you eat it in its natural state, um, you're getting the amounts and the proportions that are suited to the body. So, yeah? So aren't we supposed to have all of those omega-3, 6 and 9? That's right. Sorry. And what you'll find is... Um, Almond and olive are mostly nine, but have a touch of six and a little bit of three. Uh, Flaxseed is very high in three with a touch of six and a little bit of nine. You'll find most of the nuts and seeds have a combination. What I've done here is just given you the highest sources. And in his book, Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, Udo Rasmus, he has a page there where he's got all the nuts and seeds there and he shows the amount. So, Macadamia is very high and saturated with a little bit of mono unsaturated. Avocado is, I think, mostly um, mono unsaturated. So, you know, different foods have slightly different amounts. So when this theory came out from Ansel Keys in 1953 that saturated fat causes heart disease, that's first. And of course, it, it took a while for it to hit the, hit the public. We've got to get these fats down. So they said we've got people have got to stop eating butter, and we and they made margarine. So what's most margarines? How are they made? Well, let's make a margarine out of sunflower oil. And there are a lot of margarines made out of sunflower oil, but they've got a problem. You know what the problem is? It's liquid. So what they do is they saturate it with hydrogen ions. And that causes the hydrogen ion underneath to flip over to the other side. And so now we've lost the uh, double bond, which is just what they want because now the oil is straight. But that structure is not known in nature. It's one molecular structure short of plastic. So the margarines are very dangerous oil. It should not be touched. I mentioned the earth balance, 
which is solid because they, they blend the polyunsaturated oils with a saturated oil. And, you know, there are some natural ones that you can make by putting your, um, I think there's one that we have at home. It's soy milk, carrot juice, olive oil and coconut oil. <laughs> And I think that's blended together and that sets and it's yellow like butter because of the carrot juice in it. So I'm sure that a lot of people know those types of things. Can you say that one more time? The bit that you um, it's uh, soy milk yeah. and carrot juice. I think it's half a cup of each of those and half a cup of um, coconut oil and I think there's a cup of olive oil and then you put the salt in. So all you do is melt the coconut oil and give them a quick blend and then pour them into containers and you've got your butter. And that's a delicious butter. For people that don't like the olive oil taste, when you refrigerate it, it uh, loses that strong flavour. But more people in the world put olive oil on their bread than any other spread. Mm. So we're looking at, at Europe. So I uh, love olive oil on my bread. Mm. So when they first came out with margarine with this theory that it's saturated fat that causes heart disease um, and got people to stop eating so much fat or even fat-free diet, go over to the margarine. Did that reduce heart disease? Uh, not at all, not at all, no. But cancer rates have certainly come up almost equal to heart disease now. And I wouldn't be surprised if the toxic fat of margarine has contributed to that. But also with this theory that saturated fat causes heart disease, people were told to stop eating saturated fat. Stop the coconut, stop all saturated fat, and start to eat polyunsaturated fats. Has that helped? Not at all. They said the polyunsaturated fats are the safer fats. They are actually the most dangerous fats. Because when those oils are extracted using heat and chemicals, which is what usually is, when they're extracted using heat, what's happening to the double bonds? They're all getting destroyed. So when you go into the supermarket and you see peanut oil, you see safflower oil, you see sunflower oil, don't touch them. <laughs> they're dangerous oils. They're already destroyed. You can't destroy them anymore. Because all of the double bonds were destroyed in the extraction process. But let's go to 150 years ago, probably even 100 years ago. The only oils that were used were oils that could be extracted from the flesh of the plant. So depending on where you lived, if you lived in near the equator, it certainly was the coconut oil. And a, a, a young woman one day wanted to make me coconut oil from scratch. So she climbed the tree, she got the coconut, she grated them. She squeezed it with water, got the milk out. Then she put it in a double saucepan and heated it and it's separated into oil. <laughs> so women still today in Fiji make their own coconut oil. You can go into the markets and I was there one day and saw, saw the coconut someone had made in, in empty gin bottles, <laughs> empty whiskey bottles there, <laughs> the coconut oil. And all through Europe, women had little wooden presses in their kitchen to extract the olive oil because it comes from the flesh of the plant. Now the coconut oil can be sat, doesn't have to be in a brown bottle, can just be sat on the bench because there are no double bonds. But women quickly found that if they made the coconut, uh, the olive oil, sorry, and put it on the table in a glass bottle, it quickly deteriorated to get that bitter taste. But if they put it in the basement in you know, ceramic jars with a cork lid and stopped the light, heat and oxygen, the oil retained its fresh flavour. So when you buy olive oil, it should be in a dark bottle or a tin and it should be first cold pressed, extra virgin olive oil. 
Oh, as long as you, or you could just put it in the cool. But this explains why most extra virgin first cold pressed olive oils, when you buy them, they are in a dark bottle, aren't they? And it's, it's because of that. Something up in the northern countries is spreading around and it's a disease called um, seasonal affective disorder. You've heard of it? Seasonal affective disorder is a mental condition of, it's like depression, and they are claiming it's because of lack of sun. There's never been sun. This is in the winter months. There's never been sun. The reason why it's so much more prevalent today than it was, say, 100 years ago, because 100 years ago, people were eating the food that grew in their area. And because they were eating... <coughs> the food grown in their area, they were getting a lot more omega-3 and omega-6. So in those winter months, it's important to make sure you're eating nice amounts of your omega-3, nice amounts of walnuts. Do walnuts grow in this area? No? <coughs> but your flaxseed does, yeah? They do, yep. yep. So be mindful of keeping your omega-3 levels up in the middle of winter. And also going outside. I know you don't get a lot of sun, but just that little bit of sun is, is valuable. It's only, really, it's only really appeared since people are eating the SAD diet. You've heard of the SAD diet? The standard American diet, which is almost totally deficient in the essential fatty acids. It's the SAD diet. It is a sad diet, that's true. So let me explain the ketogenic diet in a little bit more detail to you. It was probably in about the 1920s, a group of doctors in the US were experimenting with their epileptic patients and they were fasting them. And they found that when they fasted them, the seizures in many of them stopped or greatly reduced. Because when you fast, what's your body living on? Your fat. And they found that the liver converts the fat. So let me show you the process. The liver converts the fat to ketones. And ketones are neurohealers. That's not right. Ketones are neurohealers. Not only neurohealers, they're neuroprotectors. That means they protect your brain cells and they even heal your brain cells. But you've got to eat. So what they did was they created a diet that did a similar thing in the body, which was a high fat diet. And so what they would eat, let's say for breakfast, they'd eat uh, four eggs and six rashes of bacon <laughs> and half a lump of butter. That's very high fat, isn't it? So what would you, how could you do that on a, on a plant-based diet? You'd have a bowl of lentils. You could have an avocado. You could have some tomato and cucumber and maybe some spinach and a handful of nuts and added to that a spoonful of coconut oil. Can you see carbs are right down? So in his book Stop Autism Now or his other book Stop Alzheimer's Now, Dr. Proust Fife gives the story, he calls it the ketone miracle. So when these people were on this ketone ketogenic diet, in 90% of cases the seizures didn't come back. Because of this high fat diet, the liver's converting the fat to ketones and ketones are neuroprotectors, neurohealers. So what, uh, what they found is the people found it very hard to stay on such a diet. <laughs> so Dr. Bruce Fife, he has what he calls the coconut ketogenic diet which is eating, uh, eating food that is low in carbohydrates, high in fiber, generous amounts of protein, great fats, 
and start with a teaspoon of coconut oil three times a day and build up to four teaspoons of coconut oil three times a day. And because the coconut is high in the medium chain fatty acids, that's a particular fatty acid that the liver seems to convert quicker than other fats to the ketones. And in his book, Stop Autism Now, it's about all cases of childhood uh, neuro degenerative diseases like autism, um, epilepsy, attention deficit syndrome, stories of children who recovered from going on the coconut ketogenic diet. Dr. Bruce Fife, F-I-F-E. And then in uh, Stop Alzheimer's Now, it's about all cases of adult neurodegeneration. So there's your Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, Huntington's career. And again, stories in there of people who saw turnarounds going on the coconut ketogenic diet. Yes? Uh, how much is too much though? Coconut, I mean, there must be a limit. I guess there is. I guess it depends on how much the person can cope with. But they found building up to the four teaspoons three times a day. Maybe if it's a child, two teaspoons three times a day. I don't have that much coconut oil. In fact, I actually don't have any coconut oil. I only have coconut oil if I have a delicious frozen cheesecake. Or I do do coconut oil most days when I do the oil pulling, but then I release that back out. But if I had any signs of dementia, I would start to implement that into my diet. Yes? Yeah, after going through all this, I, I have I got the question, do we really need oil egg for cooking? Because personally, I changed recently. I just put water, onions and tomatoes, and I found my food tastes good. It does taste good. This is what I do. I don't fry in water because it's not frying, it's boiling. Mm -hmm. And you don't get the flavour. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I put onion straight in the pan, I have it on a low heat, I put the lid on, and the condensation drips down and prevents it burning. Mm -hmm. And when, those, when that uh, onion starts to brown, and then you get the flavour. Mm -hmm. And then it starts to stick a little bit, then I'll put the tomatoes in, and then the juice comes out of the tomato, and the juice coming out of the tomato on those onion that sticks a little bit, beautiful flavour. Mm. And then when all the juice is coming out of the tomato, I put it on a very low heat, and then I'll put the, the olive oil in. So there is a way to do it without using any oil, and personally, I, I, don't, I don't use the oil. But if someone wanted to sauté in oil, then the coconut. Some people don't like the taste of coconut, but when you heat it like that, it's not really strong. And my husband, uh, who loves baked potatoes, our chef at Misty Mountain um, coats them in a little coconut oil and puts them in a high oven, and then you've got lovely crunchy potatoes. My aim in this lecture was to show you why fat's important. And obviously it's a very concentrated food, so you don't need very much. <laughs> and on the concentrated foods, you don't need much at all. But, but, but you need, do need a little bit. And God sanctioned the olive oil when he put oil in the widow's cruce every night when she was feeding Elijah in the time of no rain. And there's another story that, about Elijah who the woman whose husband died and her sons were going to be sold into slavery because her husband died in debt. And she went to Elijah and he said, what have you got in your home? And she said, she's got an oil jar. He said, well, go to the neighbours and ask them to borrow all their oil jars. And they all, and God filled them all with olive oil. Olive oil. And she was able to sell it and get the money and her sons didn't go into slavery. Two stories that the Bible uses to show that God sanctions the use of olive oil. But ideally, because of what I've shown you here, 
it must be first cold-pressed extra virgin olive oil. So what I'd like to do is now is open the door for questions. Open the door, the floor. <laughs> yes. What about palm oil? What about palm oil? Palm oil is a saturated fat, so nutritionally it's not a problem. It's not a problem on the body, but it's more an ethical issue with palm oil because the rainforests are getting bulldozed over to grow the palm oil and the reason why they grow so much palm oil is because they make chocolate out of it. Because if you make chocolate with the coconut oil, all you can taste is coconut. But the palm oil doesn't have that flavour. So nutritionally, not a problem on the body, it's more an ethical issue. Yeah? We talk about the food for the babies. What about water? What about water for the babies? I never used to give my babies water, but it doesn't hurt to give them a little water, especially if it's hot. Yes? There are vegan doctors out there. They're, they're, they say oil is not good, especially when you have that's cancer right. and heart problems. That's right. That's right. And that's why I did what I did this morning. Mm -hmm. So that you can make your decisions according to Bible, history, science and common sense. And by the way, the fattiest organ in the body is the brain. The brain does suffer on an oil-free diet. And I had a girlfriend that went oil-free listening to such presentations. And we were mountain climbing and I put my hand down to help her up and her hand was so dry. It was so dry. See, we need to moisten our body from the oils that we eat. Because there was an article that went out about 20 years ago saying how dangerous oil is. And that's why we need to use the BHSC method. This is the method that we can use in just about any area to determine what truth is. I've given you Bible stories. If someone says, and a man said to me one day, you're wrong in the oil, we should not be eating oil. I said to him, that's very unbiblical. And I said it to him because he was a, a Christian. And he looked a little bit taken back. I said, my suggestion is that you get a concordance and do a Bible study on olive oil. <laughs> and you will find that God certainly talks about olive oil. History depending on where you lived on the planet, there was always some sort of fat as part of the traditional diet. So if you lived right up the top of the planet, you were eating a lot of seal and uh, whale blub of fat. We come down the planet, uh, the Norwegians, the, a lot of people, I guess, like the Swedes, it was dairy. They would get their um, fats from their dairy, but back then it was organic and it was raw, so it's not as dangerous as it probably is today. So, And you come down the planet and then you see the olive oil, the coconut oil. So always traditionally, historically, every country has had some form of fat. Today I've given you the science to show you how the body uses the different fats and then we come at common sense. Yes, question? Would you say there are uh, time limits to uh, how, for example, how young you can be for a keto diet or how long you can stay on a keto diet? That's a good question. There is a movie that was made in the 90s called First Do No Harm. And my sister showed me this movie. It's a true story. And it's a true story about a little seven-year-old boy who was starting to have seizures. They put him on medication. The side effects were terrible. They tried other medication. The side effects were terrible. The next thing they were going to do was, was saw the top of his skull off to do more tests. And about that time, the mother tried to escape out of the hospital with her child, but they caught her and she couldn't take the child out. So she went to the library and she began to search and she found the ketogenic diet. This little boy was seven 
and she eventually got permission from the doctor if she had another doctor to to uh, travel with them to go to the John Huntley Hospital and when she, when they went in there the doctor immediately took the child off all medication and put him on the ketogenic diet I think they had a picture of his first meal it was two eggs I think rasher of bacon sliced tomato and sliced cucumber that was his first ketogenic diet meal now what's interesting is in the movie is the lady who's the nutritionist uh, in the movie is the nutritionist <laughs> in John Huntley Hospital and she looks like she's about 90 <laughs> and at the end it, it shows that the orderly in the hospital he actually was on the ketogenic diet for five years and now he's, uh, he's seizure free and then another little boy that was in the nursery playing with this little boy, he's on the ketogenic diet. So it's, it's a very interesting movie in more ways than one. One is that it's a true story and the other is that a lot of the players um, have been on the ketogenic diet. Are you on the ketogenic diet forever? Not necessarily so. I guess that's when you'd adjust and observe. But I would imagine in uh, conquering seizures it would imagine how serious it would depend on how serious it is I've got a friend whose little boy was vaccinated and started seiz having seizures after the vaccination and then they lived in an area where there were chemicals in the water they have six children but only one child has the has the seizures that little boy's 15 now he'll never be perfectly normal but they have kept him at home and they have him on quite a, 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 stri you know, a, a strict ketogenic diet and they manage it. I think that boy will be on it for the rest of his life. But they're managing it, which the family's quite happy about. So uh, much would depend on how serious the situation is, how much damage also is in the person. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I just want to bring out its moderation, what you were talking about. Even in fat, we have to be moderated. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's a very concentrated food. <laughs> a very concentrated food. So, And I don't know anyone who can drink half a cup of oil. You know, it's, it's, it's not pleasant to, to have huge amounts. But I do know people who can eat a whole cup of nuts. <laughs> so, you know absolutely moderation in that and that is what temperance is moderation in the good things and eliminating the things that hurt yes i know a lot of people they they take the hollywood diet they call it yeah. it's just meat eggs uh, fat proteins high proteins of, of meat and they get thinner but protein produces acid so they're very much high in acid so that, that produces cancer and That's all the right. other diseases. So if it's just protein and fat, what Hollywood does, all the, all the players. So that's the thing. I don't know if that's really good. No, it's not really good. And that's why we have been looking at, and we looked at in other lectures, the three essentials. Do you remember the three essentials? The three essentials are fibre. And notice what I mentioned with this little boy's first diet was egg rasher of bacon which I don't agree with and I wouldn't advise but he also had tomato and cucumber and that's what At Atkins found three cups of vegetables a day on the Atkins diet if you don't have the fiber the colon stops so this Hollywood diet sounds like they'd all be getting constipated because <laughs> there's no fiber there so fiber protein is essential and there's a huge difference between vegetarian or plant protein and animal protein. Plant protein doesn't produce the acid that the, the animal protein does. The other essential is fat. Now that's just the basic science, an essential nutrient. And brains deteriorate if they're not getting enough fat. Yeah. Do we need the, a balance of omega-3 and 6? We do need a balance of omega-3 and 6. And how we get the balance, we eat it in the food. We eat it in its natural state. Okay. 
So because the polyunsaturated fats deteriorate so quickly, we are best eating them in the food. Yeah. I got a bit mixed up. This is um, glucose at uh, four calories and uh, nine calories. Yeah. And a calorie is a unit of energy. So if you want a high energy food, yeah. it's the fat that will give it to yeah. you. And the four is stored in the liver. Was it in this way? Or? No. Well, gl gl yeah, glucose burns in the body at four calories per gram. Fat burns in the body at nine calories per gram. Thank you. Yeah. So, what they have found with athletes, they used to do carb loading. You've probably heard of that. And the carb loading got a quick high, but then a corresponding dump. But what they find now, if the athletes do this, fiber, protein and fat, that gives that really nice, steady, consistent delivery of fuel for their events. So a great additive to a smoothie, if people have smoothies for breakfast, is coconut cream or coconut oil. Remember the farmer? lost His cows lost the fat, put on muscle, energy. And the reason why they got energy is because that fat was burning at nine calories per gram. Ansel Keys, he's the guy who started this whole theory. And as Dr. Malcolm Kendrick states, he said, there is no proof. <laughs> what causes heart disease is damage to the arterial walls causing the the liver to make more cholesterol to plug up the holes. That's, that's what causes this. It's not the saturated fat. If it was saturated fat, when Captain Cook landed on the South Pacific Islands, all of those islanders would be dying or half dead of, of heart disease because they're eating coconut three times a day. But what did he find? No heart disease, no strokes, no diabetes. So there's your history. What did he found? What did he find? He found magnificent looking human beings. <laughs> the men were strong, tall, agile. Their teeth were perfect. The women were beautiful, long, luxurious hair. But they ate the whole plants, so they didn't extract the coconut. Plants. They did. They did. Because when I go to the islands today, a lot of areas are still cooking in the traditional way because they can just grate it in their little villages. They don't even need equipment. And they, they have this board that they sit on that's got like these metal things coming out and they... Mm -hmm. I've been at the youth camps there and all the young men in the afternoon, they're making their... There are coconuts, so, so they have, they have for centuries. It's the same with the olive oil. And they cook in the coconut oil. They put, there's a beautiful dish called roro, which is the taro leaves cooked in the coconut milk with ginger and garlic, delicious. Yeah? Oh, you had a hand? Kind of, I mean, the oil we do producing now is completely different. That's, I think, something like the hybridized wheat, which is, change the structure in the uh, coconut or whatever and it's different if I grate it or if I use the coconut milk. Well the coconut milk is what they make the oil out of and traditionally they've always done that and the coconut most of the coconuts well you don't spray coconuts so they're organic but when it says organic coconut oil compared to non-organic it's actually the process by which they make it that that's, that's the difference. But when I was in Samoa, I was talking to a lady who, who had all these coconut farms and they said they can hardly keep up the demand of the coconut oil. It's becoming incredibly popular and it's becoming popular because of Bruce Fife's book showing that coconut oil is an amazing oil. But there are hybrid coconuts trees. They said they have, some have come in, so that is true. But the coconut oil that you buy, especially if you go the organic, it's, it's really no different to the coconut oil that was made 200 years ago because it can be made so simply. In regard to olives, would it suffice to eat a lot of olives, raw olives? 
Oh, you could eat a, a lot of olives, but I don't know about you, but I love olive oil in my lentil dishes. <laughs> yeah? I was in a market and they served uh, extra virgin homemade or home crushed mm -hmm. olive oil. And you could taste it with a bit of bread and the normal oil what you should, uh, could buy in the shop. And the real new, it was not... You couldn't see through the oil. It was little, and it tasted bitter. So it was high and bitter. They must have let it be exposed to the oxygen because okay. it shouldn't. Be so it shouldn't. So the thing is, we read in the Bible when the, when they put on the on on the wounds oil yeah. that it des um, disinfected it, right? So it should be something in the oil when it's fresh crushed. What disinfect the sore? I guess so. Yes. But when I was in Italy last year, they gave me three liters of their olive oil, and it's grown in in their area, and the local presses press it for them, cold press. And I bought a suitcase, little suitcase, just so I could take this olive oil home with me. What was nice is everywhere I went, I gave everyone a little bottle of the olive oil because it was still a couple of months before I went home. And it was certainly delicious. But if there's a bitterness, it is an indicator that, mm -hmm. that the oxygen and the light may have got to it because it shouldn't be bitter. Okay. Yeah? Always, I think, manufacturing these oils... There is a, something which changes. I've tested al along the East, East African coast, they cook the way you've described with the coconut. It is very authentic and different mm -hmm. than what would be packaged for you to buy. That's right, but there's not much we can do about that, is there? Yeah, I was just adding to the fact Yeah, 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 yeah. But we, we, get, we get organic coconut oil, we get it in big buckets and it's very nice.